Welcome um, to our first meeting in a, seems like forever. It has been at least in person meeting. Well, hello there to you too. Um, we appreciate you coming out to join us, either live or via the World Wide Web over there. Um, for those of you that do not know, I am Sonia McElveen and I am part of the leadership uh, team because we're not doing the bosses here um, for the Union County Wildlife Chapter. And we appreciate you coming out. And since I don't have any information on Jay other than his name, I'm going to let Mr. Bell introduce himself and all of those nice little critters that he brought with him because he's actually why y'all came. So, without further ado, well, thank you very much. That means I can make stuff up about myself. There it is. <laughs> make, make myself seem a lot more important than I am. Um, like she said, I'm Jay Bell. Uh, I uh, have been working with reptiles pretty much all my life. Uh, I got my first snake. Uh, I ordered a price list from the back of the Boys Life magazine when I was 14 years old. And it was a reptile price list. It cost me 50 cents back in 1975 or whatever it was. And so from that price list, I ordered my first snake. Well, that was the online of the 70s. Uh, so I ordered the snake. It was a, it was a gopher snake. Uh, it took about a month for it to get there. And so that was my first snake. And since then, it's just been, depending on if you talk to me or my wife, it's either up there or down there from that, from that one. Um, reptile people are kind of like, other animal people, we can be hoarders. So I, these, this, this is almost all my animals now. This is the lowest I've been in years. So I'm good right now. But I can't say no to someone who has a reptile they don't want anymore. They can't. Uh, we are going to just go over some general reptile information. Uh, I'm going to try to not be too long-winded, and uh, hopefully we can get all this covered. Um, but then toward the end, we will start getting some animals out. Uh, and give everybody a chance that wants to, to hold some snakes or a Tony. Uh, he's always looking to get out of there. So, um, but uh, we can hold everything here except Lucy, the snapping turtle. And I've got a copperhead in here that we're going to look at in a little bit and talk about how to identify them and distinguish them from other snakes. Um, with my seven years on animal control, we've got a lot of snake calls, snakes in houses. Uh, so we would get there. Most of the time, the people thought it was a copperhead. And then you'd get there, and of course, it was a brown snake or a baby black snake or something like that. So uh, it's good to be able to, to see what the real copperhead looks like. It's like somebody that's studying how to, to work with counterfeit money or how to detect counterfeit money. They study the real bill, the real dollar, the real... Uh, money and then they can see if there's something that's not right and that's so it's best to know exactly what you're looking you know what a copperhead looks like then you don't have to think that every snake's a copperhead um so we're going to start out with um uh, what makes an animal a reptile uh any of y'all know give me some some information yes cold-blooded and what else uh there's one other main thing that almost all reptiles have Scales. Scales. Uh, those are the two basic things. Uh, uh, the, the scientific name for cold-blooded is ectotherm, uh, and all that means is they can't, they don't keep their body temperature around the right uh, uh, temperature all the time. Uh, they can't defend themselves. They can't move. They can't get away from uh, predators. They can't digest food. Uh, so if they eat something and then there's a cold spell, um, they'll regurgitate it because it'll actually rot in their gut. So they have to keep their body temperature uh, pretty much uh, up all the time in order to survive. Um, it's a little easier in this area than it is, say, like in Canada or, or, or you know, uh, West Virginia or Pennsylvania because there's a, there's a longer winter up there and they have to, you know, stay in what is called brumation, which is the reptile equivalent to hibernation. And the only, what the difference is, the hibernation, like a bear will go into hibernate, they stay hidden for the whole winter and sleep for the whole winter. They'll even have their babies in the den and not wake up, and the babies are suckling, and then they all come out of the den. Uh, reptiles, all winter long, especially in a climate like this, they can go in and out of their, where they're, they're brooming. Uh, they can go get a drink. They can even eat if the temperature stays warm enough for a while. Uh, so they, it's, it's not the same because they're awake, they're asleep, but they just they can't move because the temperature is too cold. So that's the difference between brumation and hibernation. Um, so it's scales and the cold-blooded that make, make them rep reptiles. Um, the groups of reptiles, uh, 
the, the main groups are, the, of course, the snakes, lizards, and turtles. And then we got the crocodilians, and then we got all the ones like they call them old world lizards and things like that. Uh, they're they're just in a different class than regular lizards. So it's just and there's old world snakes they call them, which are in their own class. There's even a, a couple of boas that aren't really in the same class as as boas, but they consider them boas. But they're different enough to where they're they're in their own little branch of the of the, the animal kingdom. Um, Reptiles are found everywhere in the world except on one continent. Anybody know what that is? Antarctica. Antarctica. Uh, and I'm sure you all probably think of, well, yeah, I know why, because it never gets warm enough there for the reptiles to come out and eat. And there's not a food source there for them. They just, um, they would probably all be dead. Uh, even the, the garter snakes from Canada that are used to the cold weather and come out for uh, two months in the summer and they go back into the hillside for the other 10 months. They wouldn't survive there either because it's just too cold for too long. So they couldn't, there's nothing to eat. And also if they did find something to eat, they couldn't digest it. So there's no snakes, but every other continent has snakes. Um, most of your boas are found in the um, Western hemisphere, uh, North America, Central America, South America. Uh, the uh, welcome. Uh, and then the uh, pythons are found almost exclusively on, in the Eastern hemisphere. Asia, Africa, places like that. So there's a couple pythons or a couple boas that live on, on in the uh, Eastern Hemisphere, but for the most part, all boas are here. We've even got two boas in the United States uh, that live out west, northwest, Northern California, Nevada. Uh, it's a rubber boa and a rainbow boa, and they're both small animals, and they stay underground most of the time. So it's, it's, it's quite a find to be able to locate one of them, uh, but they... Uh, they rarely bite, and those are the two bows you can find outside of Central and South America. So, all right, uh, so where do you find them? Uh, more specifically, instead of just continents, parts, parts of the world. You've got uh, what's called fossorial uh, snakes and reptiles that are live underground or under the substrate all the time. They might come out when it rains, they might come out and get a little sun, but for the most part, like your worm snakes that we have around here, they stay really cool little animals, but they stay hidden under the substrate and under the leaves and the dirt all the time. That's called fossorial. Uh, there is uh, arboreal, which are uh, tree-dwelling reptiles. Uh, so you've got like, like this guy right here, the uh, Burmese python, he's not very old, so he's still small. He'll get to be from here to the door when he's full grown, but um, a couple hundred pounds. But his name's Norm, and I called him that because my last one was Hank, and Hank was an albino Burmese python. He was nine feet long uh, when he passed away. He had an intestinal issue, and he was albino. Now, in the snake breeding world, in the reptile breeding world, if, if you find an animal or you breed an animal to look just like it normally would in the wild, they call it a normal. So that's why I called Norm Norm, because he's Norm. He's not albino like my other one was. So, but he's just as sweet. He's just as sweet. Okay, and the next thing, so arboreal is tree dwelling. A lot of snakes, like, like Norm, will climb up in trees and eat birds and mammals. Uh, but he's kind of all free. He'll eat in the water, on the land, or up in the trees. Um, the other one is aquatic. Uh, a lot of animals, uh, a lot of reptiles are aquatic. Uh, a lot of them are semi-aquatic, like your water snakes that we have around here. They're semi-aquatic. They, they feed in the water usually, but they spend a whole lot of time laying up on rocks and limbs, uh, sunning themselves, and then you'll see them like drop into the water to, to escape. Uh, so they hunt in the water and they swim in the water, but more, more, a lot of the hours of the, of the day, they're, they're sunning themselves to keep that body temperature up so that meal they just ate in the water can digest properly. Um, Aquatic animals uh, would be like your sea turtles. The only time they ever come to shore is to lay eggs. Um, our snapping turtles here in North Carolina, the common snappers, the only time you'll see a snapping turtle out of water, 99% of the time, is when it's a female crossing a road or coming up on the bank to dig a nest to lay eggs. Um, a lot of our uh, semi-aquatic water turtles, like the sliders and the cooters and things like that, they're like the water snakes. They, send a, they spend a whole lot of hours on logs and things like that. It's the ones you walk down by the water and 15 turtles dive off the log into the water. Um, I didn't bring my slider. I had a yellow belly slider, slider that I had since it hatched. 
Um, his name is Franklin. Uh, he was that big when I got him. He's about that big now, but he's, uh, he was hatched with a foot missing. So he's got three feet. Um, so, okay. And another one, uh, we've talked about the any combination of the aquatic, the arboreal and the fossorial, uh, which would be norm. And then uh, Antarctica, we talked about that. Um, it, uh, the snakes and lizards and turtles are all really good for the environment. There's a whole lot of invasive species here in North Carolina, like the red-eared slider. Um, the yellow belly slider is, is, is um, uh, indigenous to this area, but the, the, the red-eared slider, the way they got here, um, some of the ones that are, that are uh, you know, closer to my age here, remember that that's the ones they stole in the dime stores, the little baby turtles, and they had the red, the red spot on the side of their head. And now they're everywhere. And they're crossbreeding with all of our local sliders, our painted turtle, our yellow belly, our red belly sliders. So now they're uh, invasive here in North Carolina, like so many other animals. Not as bad as Florida, but we do have a lot of invasive animals here. We've got a house gecko, which is from Europe, that has several uh, populations here in the Charlotte area. Um, I've actually had people call me and go to pick it up. And the first one I went to pick up, I was, it just blew my mind because I didn't realize that it was a thing. But there's a lot of house geckos in North Carolina. Um, so, but they're really good. The ones that are supposed to be here are really good for the environment and really good for uh, the ecosystem. Uh, they eat, uh, the things they eat are usually the things that we don't want to deal with. Rats, mice, uh, moles, uh, things like that. Uh, they do cross over and eat some of the stuff we love, like our, our songbirds and things like that. But then we eat a lot of fish, uh, water snakes will eat fish, uh, water moccasins will eat fish. Uh, but a lot of the rodents that are eaten in, in the animal kingdom are eaten by, uh, uh, by snakes and lizards and snapping turtles. Snapping turtles will eat mice swimming across the water. They'll, they'll go up and bring down a baby duck or a, a, a mouse or anything they can get their mouth on. So Lucy is kind of like a garbage disposal. Um, when I feed the box turtle a banana, Lucy eats the peeling. So it's like Lucy will eat anything, meat, uh, mice, um, swallows the mice whole. Um, uh, so she is my garbage disposal and she loves it. Uh, she's a scavenger and a hunter, so she'll eat anything. Um, uh, re uh, reptiles have extremely uh, varied diets like we talked about. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the, the, the UV light and the aid in digestion that the UV light, uh, they, most reptiles need. Uh, a, a lot of UV light. That's why you see them sunning themselves. Like snapping turtles, the reason you don't see them on land is because they get all the UV light they need by floating on top of the water. So the top of their shell and their nose is usually sticking out of the water. They got that little periscope nose so they can lay in the mud and, and breathe. Uh, but uh, most reptiles need the sun. Uh, snakes, you can keep snakes with no UV light. I've been keeping snakes for 50 years and I've never had a problem with a snake needing UV light. They can metabolize their diet all by themselves just to keep the temperature in the, in the enclosure correctly. They don't need the UV light. Nothing wrong with giving them UV light. It doesn't hurt them, but they really don't need it to thrive and digest their food. Uh, that's why snakes are just like the perfect pet because I can go on vacation for two weeks and come back and as long as he had water, he's fine. Uh, he didn't need me to turn his light on and off and, and uh, didn't need to feed him every day. So uh, let's see, uh, ways of uh, getting food. Uh, all snakes do it sort of the same, but they're, they all have different specialized ways. Um, like your water snakes, for instance, they do most of their eating in water. Uh, they can eat on land, but they they will they will they would rather eat in water. Um, they don't have venom. Uh, I've, I've got a northern water snake here that we're gonna we're gonna let you see in a little bit. He's in here, and I've had him since he hatched. I had his mama at the time, and she had forty nine babies, and they have them live, so that was exciting. Uh, took her about twelve hours. I was teaching a class of animal control in Mecklenburg County, and somebody said, "Hey, the snake poop," and I went over and looked, and I said, "Nope, that's a baby snake." So. During that day, she had 49 babies, and this is one of the babies here. So she's like 10 times as big as she was when she was born. So, uh, but water snakes don't have venom, but they have something in their saliva. It's an anticoagulant in their saliva. So when they bite something, it bleeds a lot more than normal, including me. Uh, if a water snake bites me, it doesn't uh, clot as quickly. And what this helps them with is if they say they bite a frog, which is one of their favorite foods, and the frog hops, they can follow the, uh, the, uh, the blood trail because it's bleeding more than a normal snake bite would bleed. 
So that, that aids them in, in capturing their slimy, fast, slick hopping food that they go after. Uh, so it's a little harder to catch sometimes than a mouse or something like that for, for other snakes. Uh, another way uh, that, they, that snakes will catch their food, um, say like the rat snakes, like I've got a corn snake in here and a, and a black rat snake, and they're called them eastern rat snakes now because they're, they're dividing instead of what it looks like, which anybody would call that a black rat snake or a black snake, they're dividing it now by area. So this is an eastern rat snake, there's a western rat snake, there's so they've divided it genetically by area now, uh, but I'm old fashioned and to me, this is a black rat snake. And so that's what I call it. But if you want to get into it deeper, there's a lot of websites you can go bore yourself with about where the dividing lines are and all that. Um, Jay, yes. Uh, on the black rat snake, yes. is it true that they eat copper gas? Kill copper gas? A baby, a young black rat snake uh, will eat more reptiles than an adult will. But here's the thing. There's always these pictures coming out on Facebook, and it's a black snake eating a copperhead. And it says, this is why you don't kill black snakes. Well, it is a black snake, but it's a king snake. It's a, it's, well, it's a king black snake. King snakes will eat anything, and they're okay. immune to, to the copperhead venom. Okay. But yeah, the king snakes in the mountains are immune to the timber rattler venom. Uh, wherever they are, the Florida king snake is immune to the, the coral snake and the rattlesnake. I just want to make sure that I'm explaining to people why yes. I don't want to kill something. Yeah, them. yeah. The best thing about the black rat snakes is they get eight feet long and they are devourers. I mean, that snake right there, when I feed it, it eats, it eats two large rats. So in the wild, they're, they're just destroying the rat population, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. uh, the rats and mice will cause damage to our property. Snakes never cause damage to your property. They, they don't have a way to do it. So they don't gnaw on things, which brings me to the next point. Um, another way they use to subdue the prey is uh, snakes have hundreds of teeth, and they're all tilted backwards. So they're like little fish that's going like this back through their mouth. Uh, they have six rows of teeth. Almost all snakes do. They have four on top and two on the bottom. Uh, so they've got around the outside of their mouth, then they've got two rows straight back on the roof of their mouth. Then they have one row all the way around their mouth like that. They're all tilted backwards. So when they bite a mouse or a rat or something or a frog, yeah, it's hooked. And the animal could drag the snake, but that animal is not going to pull loose under most circumstances. So that helps them be able to grab their prey and hang on to it. Because uh, they basically need a lot of things that are hard to catch. So when they do buy, catch them, uh, they, they can hang on real easily without even really trying. It's like a lot of times there's two different ways snakes will bite you. One is out of self-defense. If you're messing with it or if you're trying to kill it or whatever, that's the way most snake bites happen. And in North Carolina, um, a very high percentage of the venomous snake bites uh, involve alcohol. So it's like, you know, hold, hold my beer, you know, I'm going to grab this this rattlesnake by the tail and yeah and it's honest because you i called the poison control center and that's what they told me so yeah uh, so where was i somebody yeah it, yeah hold my beer um so uh let's see uh different kinds of diets so the the rat snakes the corn snakes uh they are constrictors so they have those backward facing teeth and they'll grab the animal then they wrap around them and then they'll just hold tight uh, basically keep squeezing a little bit every time the animal exhales until the heartbeat stops. Uh, when they feel that heartbeat stop and, the, and it, when the oxygen is cut off to the brain of the animal, then they'll nine times out of 10, they'll start at the face and swallow the animal whole from the front. Um, they can swallow it from the back, but it's a lot more difficult because the legs naturally go back on the mammal or whatever it is they're eating. So that's, that's usually the way they end up swallowing them. Um, let's see what else we have here. Well, I've got a copper in here, like I was going to tell you, but they, they'll just, they'll, they're an ambush hunter normally where they'll just lay by a rodent trail and just wait. And they'll wait for weeks until something walks by, until they get a bite on it. And then the venom of a venomous snake actually changes the scent of the animal. So as the mouse or whatever it is is running down a trail trying to hide, they can follow that particular animal's scent until they get to it and then they can eat it. Uh, usually by the time, because they'll, they'll bite and they'll wait uh, a little bit. To, then they'll start flicking their tongue to smell where the animal went. And we're going to talk about how that all works too, um, the, the, with how they smell with their tongues. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, so we've got water snake weeds mostly. Uh, we've got the Burmese who hunts all three places. 
Uh, we've got the king snake, who is the destroyer of all other snakes and lizards. Uh, so they all have different different ways they hunt. Now there's a there's a snake in North Carolina, all up down the east coast. It's called a, a black racer, and they look a lot like a black rat snake, but they're cylindrical instead of rat snakes are shaped like a loaf of bread. Their their belly scales are completely flat. Then they got a dome for their body, and what those scales do, that's why you see uh, black rat snakes climbing up trees with no bark on them because they use those belly scales to lock in between pieces of bark and they, they can go straight up a brick wall if they can find enough little loose mortar to lock their belly scales in. So the, the racer looks a lot like them, but they're more cylindrical. They're usually not quite as big. They'll get about five or six feet long. Um, they're anywhere from gray to black, uh, depending on the individual. And the thing is, that was the scientific name for a racer has the word constrictor in it, and they're not constrictors. So that's why you won't hear me use a lot of scientific names in my class, because I, I, they, they're not constrictors. They, they'll bite the animal and they'll just eat it, uh, but they don't wrap around it and constrict it like a king snake or a rat snake or something like that. Um, let's talk about the box turtles for a minute before we go on. Uh, <laughs> the, the male is um, Brianna's that, that works here, and the female is mine. And I said, well, can we put them both in for a while and see, maybe we'll get some babies. <laughs> and, uh, and this gentleman was telling me that the, the, the male wasn't really, or the female, the male wasn't really interested in, in another female, so, but he has harassed her, so I'm hoping maybe something romantic happens uh, while we're here this evening. Maybe he's romantic. Yeah, yeah, I love testing turtle waves. Um, so, these guys, um, of course, you see them crossing the road all the time. Uh, they're either, you know, looking for food, looking for water, looking for a mate. Uh, they stay in the same general area their entire life. So if the nest hatch, hatches in, over in an acre of woods or farmland, they'll stay within an area as big as a football field their entire life. Now, that's amazing because they can live to be 90 years old. So they can spend a lot of time in the same area. If there's water source there and food source, they'll stay. They have no reason to leave. You'll see them crossing the road. You know how a lot of them get killed. Uh, you, you know the thing about if you see one crossing the road, you pick it up and you put it on the side of the road it's heading toward because they have this amazing way. The snapping turtles are the same way. They have this GPS in their brain. And I don't understand how it works, but you can let a snapping turtle go a mile from its body of water and it will find its way back to that same body of water. And that's the same with the box turtles. They will, um, uh, it confuses the heck out of them. If you take one out of the wild and you put it in a terrarium, they just walk in circles because it just messes their, with their brain so much. They'll be constantly trying to get back to where you, you got them from. So it's really good that if you do ever get a box turtle, that you get one from a reputable breeder uh, or like the one I got, I got from a guy where he owns a zoo in uh, Kernersville, where people drop off reptiles that they've been keeping for years and they can't keep them anymore. Now that turtle is not going to be able to find its way back to where it was. So he's, you know, that's that's where I got that turtle. So he, she's used to living in a terrarium. She eats, she ate a bunch of steak the other night that I leftovers that I. But she'll eat worms. They'll eat they'll eat vegetables or animals. They love they love mealworms and crickets. They love um, apples, they love bananas, they'll just eat all different kinds of berries, uh, earthworms, any kind of bug you drop in there, they'll, they'll chase it down and eat it. Uh, so they need, and again, they need the UV light to help them metabolize all that food that they ate. Um, well, if they're staying in that such a small area, how does that affect their genetic diversity? Because it sounds like they'd be in Well, I imagine they are. I, I, I doubt, I mean, I have no doubt that there's, there's inbreeding going on because they do stay. Now, I think if there's males, they tend to go and find another area, oh, okay. but it's not far away. Okay. They, they don't go for miles and miles and, you know, they stay within the same general area. But, but yeah, to, to leave a baby box turtle alone, if it's got food and water, it'll stay in the same place its entire life, uh, which is, to me, pretty amazing, you know. But, yeah. Yeah, and these guys are the same the same way that the, the common snappers. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. Talk about constriction, talk about the teeth. Okay, the Jacobson's organ. Who's familiar with that? You want to tell us about that? Uh, sure. Uh, it's kind of they uh, use their tongue to pick up the scent molecules, if you will. 
then they go and rub it on the top of their mouth. And, and that kind of, not exactly smell, but they pick up pheromones to track down usually. Okay, you know more about the Jacobson's organ than most people do. What it is, um, they, they, exactly what he said, they'll stick their tongue out and they'll pick up scent molecules. That's why they're constantly doing this. They'll even, you'll see them put their tongue out to the side and it's like they're trying to figure out where the smells from. They're nervous, they're investigating the area and they'll hold it out there. And when they're really nervous or really curious, they'll hold their tongue out. Normally they'll just stick it out and they have a slot right here and it'll come right through that slot and they wiggle it and they'll pick up molecules. They've got two holes in the roof of their mouth and it's called a Jacobson's organ. And they stick those forks, the fork tongue, up in those holes and it goes straight to the brain. And that's that's how they smell. Yeah, it's old factory, it's hardwired straight from those holes, straight to the brain. And that tells them if it's something that they wanna eat or something to be afraid of or whatever. Uh, but that's, it's, it's pretty amazing. This is the thing about cut tiles that always did make them attractive to me because they, there, there's so many different um, qualities and variations that they all have, uh, but they all have those cool things that other animals don't have. Now, there are a lot of lizards that have the uh, uh, Jacobson's organ too, like your monitor lizards and, and, and things like that. They've got the forked tongue and they stick it out and they do the exact same thing. Um, but like our, our little local anoles and skinks and things like that, they don't have that. Um, so... Uh, those are the two most common lizards you'll see in this area are the anoles, the green anoles and the skinks, uh, the five line skinks. Um, okay, so the pit vipers uh, like the copperhead and I'm gonna try to show you, there's a picture here I'll show you when, when we're done about the pattern and how to identify but then I'll show you the actual copperhead that's in the, the aquarium there. And he is doing a really good job hiding, but um, they have some abilities that no other snakes have. The pit vipers, that's your rattlesnakes, your copperheads, your water moccasins, and a lot of other snakes around the world that have these pits in the side of their head. It's between their nostril and their eye, and it's just holes right there. And what those do is they can accurately strike at a warm-blooded animal and never see it with their eyes. So it can be totally dark, and they can follow an animal because of the heat register in their brain. The heat, they pick up the heat temperature change here. That's why a lot of people carrying a snake bag with pit viper in it, a lot of times they'll get bitten on the leg because they're seeing the heat of the leg through the bag and then they'll bite. Wow. So that's why you see a lot of snake collectors now, they use five gallon buckets with screw on lids. They, they, they've kind of gotten away from the bags. But um, so that's pretty amazing that they can follow a warm blooded animal until they, they actually can accurately strike at it and they never saw it with their eyes at all. Hmm. So. And the other animals that have those are your, most of your bows and pythons, but it's not holes like that in their face, it's along their lips. Uh, they've got little grooves on their lips, but that it does the exact same out. thing. What's that? That's why I got one out. This guy? Well, what's driving him crazy is he's always, this is the first time I've had him in with any other snakes. So he is stressing out. So let's see if he's going to bite me out of excitement. Let me get him out of there. He is, he is not happy. I've got a water snake and a garter snake in here. They've been together a bunch of times on these events. This guy has never been with another snake, so he's not liking it very much. So I may have to make a change here in a minute. <laughs> so what's wrong, Norm? Calm down. All right, so let's see. Uh, the venom uh, of the snakes. There's three basic types of venom. There's a lot of different combinations and cocktails of those three types, uh, but like say the copperhead, a rattlesnake, and water moccasin have a, um, yeah, he's never reacted this way before, so let's see if we can calm down. Um, so they have a, a, what's called a hematoxin uh, of venom, your pit vipers and, and some other snakes. And what that venom does is they'll bite the animal and then it actually starts to digest the animal as it's running away. So it's already starting to break down the cells in the blood and it keeps the blood from clotting. And so it's, it's pretty, um, pretty amazing stuff. That's why you don't want to get bitten by a uh, hematoxin uh, venomous snake. So they can bite the mouse and then as the mouse is running away, it's already starting to break down and that aids in digestion for the snake. 
That's why it's not good for you to defang a snake because they need that venom as part of their digestive system. So that's the side effect that they're probably going to die if you defang them, uh, that they can't digest their food even properly because it'd be like jamming a whole mouse down their, down their stomach without uh, having the beginning digestion part for the venom. Mm -hmm. Another kind of uh, venom uh, that we have here in the United States is a neurotoxic. Um, can anybody name a snake that has a neurotoxic venom in the United States? Rattlesnake? That's a hematoxic because they're a pit viper like the copperhead. It's the coral snake has a hematoxic or a neurotoxic venom. It's mostly neurotoxic. Snakes can have both. Uh, every species has a little bit different mixture of venom, but a, a coral snake is mostly a neurotoxic and that's, uh, they're closely related to cobras. That's the snake we have in the United States. Uh, that is one of the most dangerous ones. The, the only benefit the coral snake bite is that a lot of times they're pretty small animals and they, they really, sometimes they, they can't get their mouth wide open to get you. But if they bite you on the finger or the toe or something like that, here's the bad things about the neurotoxic venom. With the copperhead and it bites you, right away you're, you're in pain, you, there's swelling, uh, there's redness, uh, you know, with any venomous snake bite, you get to the hospital right away. You dial 911 and you get to the hospital. Uh, with the coral snake, you could be bitten by a coral snake and not know it for hours. And then you'll start feeling lethargic and tired and just like something's not right. And then your uh, diaphragm and different things start shutting down. So you can begin to suffocate and you can have organ failure and things. But you, the thing is, you don't know why. So, you know, if you do call an ambulance to get to the hospital, you don't even know to tell them that you were bitten by a coral snake. Wow. So it's, it's a very dangerous snake to be bitten by. Um, to, North Carolina? to the east of us. Easter. Yeah, we, we don't have any uh, water moccasins right here. We don't have any um, coral snakes right here. We don't have any eastern diamondbacks right here. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some timber rattlers, some pygmy rattlers, and some copperheads. Uh, everybody will tell you their water moccasin story. Clear up into Pennsylvania, I've heard people saying, yeah, I killed a water moccasin the other day. It was in my grandfather's pond. No, you didn't. You killed a northern water snake. It was not a water moccasin. Uh, so it, it's, it's just, you know, I, I wish I could get that word out. There's a map. You can, you can just um, Google uh, water moccasin uh, uh, region or range, and it'll come up and it'll show you that they start two counties to the east of us. They start south of us. Uh, and then they go up the East Coast up into Virginia. But where we are right here is the best place to live because mostly all we have in, in this area right here is copperheads. Wouldn't want to get bitten by one, but that's better than getting bitten by a water moccasin or a rattlesnake. Uh, in Gastonia, there's a pocket of pygmy rattlers. But in Mecklenburg and Union, uh, not so much. But east of us, toward the coast, we got pygmy yeah, rattlers. I grew up in Missouri. We have water moccasins. Okay, okay, yeah, they're, they're not a fun uh, snake to get bitten by. Well, let's, let's move on. Another uh, 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 common um, venom is the cytotoxin, and those are the three, the hematoxin, the neurotoxin, and the cytotoxin are all the three uh, basic venoms, but then there's different combinations of each. Like there's cobras with neurotoxin and hematoxin, so you don't want to get bitten by them. Uh, let's see, next, um, we talked about the ectotherm. Uh, the reason they have to keep their body temperature up, like we have to eat two or three meals a day to keep our brain active, feed our brain, so because our, our brain keeps our body temperature where it's supposed to be. They don't have that. So they can eat once a month or once every two weeks, not preferably, but they can, and it doesn't, so it doesn't affect their body temperature. They have to get in the sun. They have to get where it's warm. Um, an anaconda in the Amazon can eat a deer or a taper, and go a year without eating any of it. So as long as they keep their body temperature right, they'll slowly digest that animal and then they'll start hunting again after that. If their body temperature drops too much, they'll regurgitate that animal and then they have to hunt again when it warms up enough to eat. So, all right, poop. Snake poop. Uh, snakes have cloacas like other reptiles do, it's like birds. So when they poop, that's, when you look out on your patio, you can always tell the difference between the lizard poop and toad poop. Because the toad poop will be a little brown, thick line with no white in it. It'll be thick, kind of shaped 
like that. Lizard poop will be black and white. And the black part is the feces and the white part is the uric acid. That's the pee. It comes out solid. So like a bird, a bird poop, it's white and black. The white part is the uric acid. And the same thing with snakes. I wish one would use the bathroom so I could show you. Uh, it's just thrilling to see. But um, so that's, that's the poop. Uh, shedding. Um, all reptiles do it, even turtles. And even turtle shells shed. So as they're laying out there, getting their sunlight from a log, uh, these, they're called scoots, these sections of shells on their back. You'll see them lifted up off and they're clear and they actually come off. A reptile shedding means they're growing. The more, take like a snake for instance, the more snake eats, the faster it grows. I could get this guy to 10 foot in a year and a half if I feed him enough. Wow. Yeah, but I don't want him to be 10 foot in a year and a half. I want, I want him to be 20 foot in 10 years. I, don't, I want it to be slow and, and make sure that, um, uh, you know, I have him for a long time. If I feed him too much, they'll die. They'll have heart disease and all kinds of stuff. So the more they eat, the faster they grow. The faster they grow, the more often they shed. So this guy could shed once a week or he could shed once a year, depending on his diet. So, all right. And I brought some snake skins here. So if you want to look at it close afterwards, or if you want to take one home with you, you can. Uh, I've got a giant supply of it. Okay. If you're walking in the woods, I can tell that you make a lot of noise. They'll get out of your way because the snakes, because they don't want to interact with it. They absolutely don't want to interact. Now, there are some snakes that will hide and not move. Okay. Uh, so you do want to watch. You're walking down a path like the copperhead, for instance. He's, he's sitting in the same place waiting for the bounce to walk by. So he may not be as quick to move away. Okay. Uh, but, you know, but most snakes you never see. You got snakes all around you, you never see them because they're gone. They're doing their best to get away from you. Because they're scared to death. It's like a 10-story building walking toward them. They don't want to be eaten by anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, real quick reproduction. Um, uh, say turtles, for instance, box turtles, uh, snapping turtles, a lot of other turtles can mate once and lay several clutches of eggs. So they have the ability of keeping sperm in their body and then, then uh, uh, fertilizing eggs at a later date. So they can lay three or four eggs and then a year later lay three or four more eggs from the same breeding. And this helps with population. Uh, you know, because like these guys in the wild, and he is really interesting. Um, he's not moving quick enough though, because we're going to run out of time. He's, he's not going to get one once. But anyway, um, so they, they can make once and then she can have two or three clutches of eggs from that. Because they may never see each other again. I mean, let's face it, you know, they're, they're, they're turtles, you know. My, my son told me, he was about 13, and I, I told him about snappy turtles about that, how, same thing. And he's like, I said, I don't wonder why. And he's like, I think it's because she's so unattractive. <laughs> Is that the turtle that people in the South do? Oh, yeah, I've had it before. Yeah, um, my grandfather showed me how to we catch them and, yeah, okay. and eat them. Uh, the meat's delicious. Uh, I can't eat Lucy because she's Lucy, right. but uh, yeah, it's it's delicious. Um, let's see. Does it really taste like chicken? Not really. I mean, it just tastes. I I think it tastes more like beef. Okay. Uh, it's it's red meat. There's a little bit of light lighter meat, uh, depending on where on the base of the shell and stuff. But it's to me, it tastes more like. Uh, they say there's seven kinds of meat in there, and I as many turtles as I've eaten, I've never seen. Seven types of meat, but I don't know. Uh, live bearing is is it's called uh, viviparous. Uh, it's the water snakes, things like that. They have live babies, like she's one of the forty nine babies. Then there's uh, egg laying. Uh, it's oviparous, um, which means they carry the eggs in them all the way until they have the, lay the eggs, and then let they hatch sixty days later. You know, at a later date, they'll hatch. Then there's ovoviviparous, which the mom carries the, the babies or the eggs in, and then they hatch inside the mom, and then the babies come out alive. So there's three basic ways that snakes have babies. Black snakes, uh, corn, corn snakes, 
things like that are egg layers. Water snakes, garter snakes, and, and, and those are, are all live bearers. I saw black snakes having sex in my backyard. I never saw that until I was Me like, too. in my <laughs> 60s. And I'm like, what's happening here? Because they were all like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's what y'all are doing. Yeah, that's what they're doing. <laughs> and you never know if it's if it's uh, king snakes because they might be made or might be one of the king snakes is eating the other king snakes. So you got to oh, kind of take a double double were, glance and see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is uh, most of what we're going to talk about. I've just got some questions for you uh, to clear up some maybe myths or things. These are some commonly asked. Yeah, these are commonly asked questions in these classes. Um, well, one thing is, how can I keep snakes off my property? That's like the most the, the, the most commonly asked question from people. Why would you want? Uh, well, that's the way I look at it too, because they're eating the things I don't want on my property. So, but if you don't want a snake on your property, don't waste your money on snake away from Lowe's. Don't waste your money on mothballs. None of that works. Uh, once it rains, they're gone. And even until then, a snake will crawl, crawl right over a mothball. They just don't care. Um, it may shock their senses for a second, but they're just going to keep going. Um, ways to keep them out are keep grass cut. Keep piles of junk out of your yard, lumber, uh, old uh, cars, toys, shrubs trimmed. Keep your shrubs trimmed. If you have any say on the properties around you, keep that grass cut. Um, the taller the grass, the more mice and things you're going to have, and so the, the more reptiles you're going to have going in after the mice. Uh, watering your lawn will attract frogs, toads, and rodents, and then you'll have uh, a bigger chance of getting have snakes on your property if you water your lawn. And I mean, you know, people water their lawn around here like crazy. Uh, but that's if you, if you absolutely don't want snakes on your property, that's the way. That's one of the ways you can do to keep them out. If you've got a snake on your porch or in your yard, you want to get rid of them. Best thing to do is either take a, a leaf rake or a broom and, and, and put them, you know, shove them over into the woods or in a big garbage can and call. There's a bunch of different snake removal companies that will come and take it away. Now there's a cost for most of them. Some in Union County here, there's some that'll just come and do it for free, but you can find them online. Waterfowl Rescue, an Indian Trail, they'll they'll come and get snakes. I mean, they used to anyway. I don't know if they still yeah, do. Okay, and they don't charge you. They'll just come and take them away for you. Um, <clears throat> it is illegal to relocate any wild animal. So unless they, the company has permits to do that, like it's illegal for me to come to your house, Get a black snake out of your living room and go let it go a mile away. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to let it go on your property if I get it on your property. Right. So you got to keep that in mind. You don't want to like throw the word out there and tell people what you're doing because they can come back and bite you. Um, uh, bite you. <laughs> that was not. Okay. So another one is oh, another way to keep them, uh, get them out of your yard is, is with a garden hose. Uh, you know, you can kind of direct the direction the direction they're going yeah. in and get them back in the woods or something like that. If you're not really about worried about them being that close, but you still want them on your porch, you can kind of water hose them. Not not like a pressure washer, but just kind of direct their where they're going. Um, do snakes want to bite you? They do not want to bite you. Uh, the venomous ones don't want to bite you because they they're venomous to subdue their prey. They don't want to waste it on a defensive fight. A lot of times copperheads will do what's called a dry bite. They'll bite if they don't use their venom. So you go to the hospital and then they watch you. They put you on an IV and yes. Uh, I had a friend that got a snake bit by the baby copperhead. And they said those are more dangerous because they don't learn to control their venom. That's a myth. That's a myth? Okay. That's a myth. Yeah. Um, I've gone the whole spectrum with that. I've, uh, I've watched the, the, the herpetologists and biologists reports over the years. And for a long time, they were saying they can't control their fangs. They can't control how much venom they give you. They just all, well, that's a myth. it's a myth. If a giant copperhead bites you on the leg uh -huh. and a tiny baby copperhead bites you on the leg, mm -hmm. that giant copperhead has a lot of venom. Mm -hmm. So it's going to do you a lot more damage. Um, it's the, the only difference in venoms between the same species like this, like copperhead here and a copperhead in Georgia. There may be a little bit difference in the chemical makeup, uh, enzymes and proteins. One may have a little more of this, or a little, but they're all basically a hematoxin venom, pretty much the same strength. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I, I know right, because I've heard that and I've... 
Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> they, they'll tell you a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we talked about black snakes eating other snakes. The adult black snakes, they're, they're not a reptile eater for the most part. Some people will tell you, yeah, I saw a black snake eating them. I've kept them in together. Uh, zoos keep them in together, and I, it's never been an issue with anything I've seen. It's the king snakes that will eat the copperheads, but they'll eat the black snakes too. Uh, will snakes chase you? They don't want to chase you. Uh, they might strike at you a couple times if you get them cornered. Uh, you may be the only thing between them and their water that they're trying to escape to, a uh, water snake or something. So it may look like they're chasing you, but they're just trying to get safe. They're trying to get, if they got to go through you, they're going to go through you, but they're not like chasing you to bite you. Now, if, they're, if they strike at you and you're still standing there, they may strike again. It may look like they're chasing you, but that's not what they want to do. And they don't want to bite you because even a non-venomous snake, I mean, it, it's not comfortable. It, it hurts. And it also, they lose teeth. Now, the teeth grow back in, but they don't want to lose teeth and they don't want to use their venom. And they just, they don't want to bite you. They'd rather just be left alone. Dave, if you have the black snake and the rat snake right next to each other, mm -hmm. what's the major difference that just the common person can look at and go, oh, that one's. The, 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 the black snake and the rat snake? Mm -hmm. Because they're the same thing. Like, this is a black rat snake. Uh, which is, some people call them rat snake, some people call them black snake. Some people call them black rat snake, but it's the same snake. Mm -hmm. So that they're the same. And the king snake. And the king snake. The yeah. king snake will, 90% of the time, 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, will have these bands around the white okay. or the yellow. The females usually have a tan or a yellow band around well, it. Well, it's solid black, then it's the rat yeah, yeah, now, when they're babies, they're not. When, when they hatch, they're, they're brown and gray, and they have a definite pattern on them. And a lot of those get, it's to help them be camouflaged when they're young. But uh, as they grow, they turn more black. But even like right after he eats, like right now, I can see the old pattern, the white between the scales. And when they eat, it really spreads those scales out. And you can see the skin between the scales. And you can see the old pattern, even on an old black rat snake. Now you know why I'm at this class. Hey, it's great. <laughs> All right, um, hoop snake, you ever hear that? No. Nope. Okay, I'm glad you haven't because it's really dumb. Um, <laughs> it's coach whip snake or whip snake, uh, and they say it's like a myth that they'll bite their tail and they'll roll after you. People actually <laughs> believed this. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, uh, snappy turtle bites. I've heard where snappy turtle bites you won't let go until lightning strikes right. or you know, light a match under its tail or something like that. If they bite you, most of the time, it's just a wham and they're done. Um, I've never been bitten by one, but I've seen a lot of videos. People intentionally letting themselves get bitten to That's see what would happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust anybody with my beer. So. Um, yes. He's climbing. Which one? The turtle? He was climbing on it. Oh, I can't say oh, that's it. awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> you it outside, buddy. I don't know if it was, I assumed it was him in the back. Yes, it is. Yep. Well, keep talking. He seems to like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, a milk steak. We have a milk steak here in North Carolina, the Eastern Milk Steak. Um, we got a video. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, the animal would like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's what your buddy was doing when you you weren't here. So um, the milk snake, uh, the, the rumor was that they would uh, uh, like suck the milk out of the cat. And yeah, but that's not why they're in the barn. Snakes don't drink milk. They're carnivorous. Snakes eat only meat. They have no interest in milk. So what they, they were in the barn eating the mice that were eat, that was eating the grain that the cows were eating. So it, it, it's, that, that's why, same thing with the corn snake. Uh, there's two different reasons they think they call it corn snakes. Uh, one is because they thought that they eat, eat the corn. And the other one is because their bellies, I'm going to show you in a minute, looks like, um, you know, that Indian corn, you hang on the door at Thanksgiving or whatever, it's got that pattern to their bellies. So that's, all right, we're almost I there. I the last one. Not know, but I have no. <laughs> that's exactly right that's exactly right way to go all right so uh, venomous snake bite used to be they had to make like a little x on each bang mark and suck the venom out 
uh, put a tourniquet on the limb, and then uh, wait. All of that's wrong. All of that's wrong. 911, go to the doctor. If you're in Charlotte, go by ambulance so they can get you faster than you can through the traffic in your own car. Um, don't cut the wound. Don't suck any venom out. Uh, don't put ice directly on your skin and definitely don't put a tourniquet on your arm or leg because right. there's more damage done if you try to do that stuff than if you just wait and let the doctors do it at the hospital. Uh, uh, there's always been a rumor about black snakes and copperheads mating and having babies and the black snakes were venomous because of that. And that's, that's not true. Uh, there is some crossbreeding that's done in labs between like copperheads and water moccasins, but they're both all of you, buddy. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, and then we talked about the water moccasins in this area. So, um, and that's uh, that wraps up. Is there any questions before we get an animal or two out? We have a few questions on here. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. I have a pond and I need to walk into what should I be concerned about? How can I keep away from them to keep them away from in the water? I don't think there's much to worry about. The, the snapping turtles, if there's any in there, they're gonna do whatever they have to do to get away from you. Um, the, uh, the any snakes, um, the, the water snakes. If you live in the Union County area, you don't have to worry about the water moccasins. Um, so the water snakes that are in the pond are just uh, like the northern water snake or the brown water snake. They're not venomous. Uh, they will do their best just to get away from you. Then so I, I don't think unless you've got an alligator in there, I think you're in good shape. <laughs> you got to follow up with that. Should I be concerned about them coming into my house? Uh, there's always that possibility. Snakes, uh, because of body temperature, like we talked about, have to keep their body temperature up to digest their food. So they will look for a place to stay warm or even to stay cool in the summertime. So if they're crawling by your house and they find a crack where they feel a little warm and it's cold outside, they may crawl in there, but it's not to get you, it's just to get their body temperature right. If you see one in your house, um, uh, you can call one of the snake removal companies online or um, uh, if you're around here, you can call me, but it's a $40 charge in Union County for me to come and get them. Uh, the problem is when they're in the house, usually, unless you get them right away, they're really hard to find once, you know, it, by the time I get there, they're going to be gone. Um, so um, uh, you can keep them out by plugging up a lot of holes. Uh, like we said, mothballs don't work, snake away doesn't work, uh, but there's always a chance, uh, but it's a slim chance that if you got all the holes plugged up, there's, it's just a slim chance that they're going to, that they're going to come in there. Get rid of all your rodents. If you see any rat or mouse species, uh, call an exterminator. Get rid of all the food that might be driving them into your house. That's another reason they come in is for food. Okay. Uh, does NC have an area with an environment that could sustain pythons like the swamps in Florida? Uh, not for very long. Um, they might live through the first summer, but when it gets down to, uh, you know, 20 degrees for a very long, unless they found a really warm place to, to climb into for the winter, they're not going to survive the winters here. Okay, I think that's all the questions we have from here. Okay, who wants to hold Norm? <laughs> <laughs> he finally called Dan. He really called Dan. He did. Yeah. He was a. So we did have one more. Sorry. Oh, uh, sure. How to identify poisonous snakes by belly scales? Well, that's probably the, the least way that you want to identify them. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this uh, on the camera. Uh, that's a copperhead in that picture. Uh, you see the dark bands on the side of the body. When you're looking at the copperhead from the side, they look like Hershey's Kisses. And that's the main venomous snake in this area that you want to look for. Uh, if you look at the snake from the top down, the, ba the dark bands look like hourglasses. It's shaped like an hourglass. That's the two best ways to tell a copperhead. A water snake will have bands like that, but they're sporadic. They're not shaped like hourglasses. They're just all over the place. Uh, that's the best way in this area to, to find, to figure out if it's been, if it's a venomous snake or not. All right.
his flipperish. And I've had him since he hatched, and he has a neurologic issue that he was hatched with. Um, when I'm feeding him, he'll come up to take the mouse out of the tongs, and then he just falls backwards. So I have to work a little harder to make sure the food's in his mouth. But he's uh, over five feet long now. He, he drinks, he eats, he's growing. So he does really well, even though he's got that brain issue. Um, there's two things they can hatch with that would cause these symptoms. One is a viral thing. And if that's what it was, he would have been dead at a young age. Uh, but this is just a, a neurological brain issue that somehow he ended up with. But you'll see, he, sometimes his head is just like upside down. Most see how he does. Most snakes will be up here trying to, you know. But uh, like I said, I've had him since he hatched, and he's. Uh, you guys want to hold licorice? Oh, yeah. You can share it if you want. Okay, gotcha. Now I will say that that snake and this snake have never bitten anybody. But just like a dog poking in the eye, you know, so it can happen. But um, and, and even if it does, we just have to wash your hands. There's no, there's no big guy. You got any idea why I call him licorice? He's cool. We yeah, had, he's a great thing. We had an eight foot one that he got into the eaves of the chicken coop. Trying to get it out was pretty, pretty rough. Was he all wound up? And, yeah, because yeah. it was. Literally screwed it, and we poked it from both ends, and eventually it just walked out and took off. But That's I was just yeah. like, "The chickens are." Oh, they do. They go crazy. They know. They know they're in danger. Yeah. 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 All right. Come here, Get out of here. Now, another snake we have in this area that's in the rat snake family is the corn snake. And that's what this is. It's young, but he's not very old. I'm going to show you the belly, how we talk about the, the Indian cord design. You see on the belly, how oh, it's uh, kind of reminds you of the. Oh, yeah. That is very good. That is very cool. Yeah, and they're, they're uh, when they're small, they'll eat a lot of lizards and things like that. And then as they grow, they'll eat a lot of mammals and birds and eggs, like a black rat snake does. You see the belly of the sky. Oh, that's gorgeous. He finally he calmed down. Yeah, he's going crazy. Yeah, he's like, well, he did not like being in the He did not. I know next time not to put him in with anybody else. You see that? Another way to tell the racer is from the white rat snakes. Uh, a racer will have white on his chin and his body's a lot smoother and you won't see as much of this. You see the white? Yeah. You won't see as much of that. And they don't have what's called keeled scales. You can see the little the little lines across the scale, the little raised up part that's called keeled. And some snakes have keeled scales and some snakes have smooth. Like, so on the side is smooth. See how smooth? A racer, all their scales are smooth. And the only white on them is right under their chin. Then it turns immediately to the same color as the rest of the body. Okay. Black rat snakes are like a corn snake. They've got this modeled uh, black and white. Yeah, you can see how kind of white goes way back. Uh, and oh, so, this is the guy with the neurologic issues? Yes. Yeah, poor guy. He's, he has his issues. But, That's all I got mine. Me too. But he's a very calm guy, and he's, uh, he's just been this way all his life. Did you guys do the thing? <laughs> Did you say that they do the thing? <laughs> You want to hold those? Sure. Just put it against you. Okay. And then and you can just put your hand on his back and just okay. stay right there. Oh, uh, it looks like a little baby. Yes. And you see the big holes in his head? That's his ears. He's got a giant. The, and the thing about these guys is when they hatch, they're from Australia in the outback where it's really hot. So you can keep them during the day at 110, 120 degrees and they would be fine. Um, they cold at night, just like in the desert, it gets cold at night. So all his lights and heat goes off at night, but during the day, it's, it, I use 150. He feels cold right now. Oh yeah, he'll be that way until I get him back. Okay. His, he has 30 gallon aquarium he lives in with trees and everything. But the, the things about these guys, when they hatch, they're about that big, and they eat almost all insects. And then with a little bit of vegetation, and as they grow, 
uh, that switches, and now he's 90% of veg vegetation and 10% insects. Uh, the insects move most of just for treats now. He loves chasing, chasing crickets and mealworms. He loves, I buy these jars of just already yeah. like freeze dried or whatever insects. And he'll just eat them like, like he's all excited. Or is he's cold? Got another question. Yes. Had to identify snakes without the head by belly. Was one row scales was non poisonous and two rows of scales below cloaca poisonous? Um, there's some truth to that, but not 100%. So you're better off just knowing what the snake looks like. Um, the, um, yeah, I mean, like the, like the, um, well, I'll show you the water snake. Uh, normally they're very, uh, very interesting to handle because they're very defensive and they'll bite, 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 bite. Uh, if you can see, he's got the double rows. Oh, I'm going on it. I don't know if you can see it there, but past the cloaca, there's double rows of scales. Um, but that's not 100% uh, on all venomous or non venomous snakes. So you really have to just look at the specific species. Uh, they're all, it, it could be it could be pretty much anything. So, and another thing you can't go by is the eye, the pupil. Um, some venomous snakes have round pupils, some have like the cat shaped pupils. So, like a, a, a copperhead, when it's, when it's uh, bright out, their pupil might be like cat shaped, like cat pupil shaped slits. But if it's a dark, if it's kind of dark and cloudy, their, their pupils are almost completely round. So that's another thing that you really can't go by. Plus like a coral snake is highly venomous and they have round pupils. So you gotta, you just pretty much gotta know the species and, and several different things can tell you what species it is. But, uh, these guys have the anticoagulant in the so if he bites me, I'm gonna bleed more than more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> the the main thing is just knowing the knowing the different species and knowing all the characteristics of those particular species. Because a lot of those a lot of those ways people tell venomous from non-venomous aren't aren't really accurate. So Thank you. yes. Is that the copperhead? Yes. I'm um, backing up. I'll let him get that one first. That's right. Go through him. She don't. Mm -hmm. Grandson. Mm -hmm. Hello, Grand. Brianna. Hey, thank you so much for doing this tonight. Sorry, I can't be there. I wish you were here too. We're having fun. And your turtle was having sex with the other turtle. You know, <laughs> when I worked at the state park, I had two box turtles, a male and a female, and it happened every day. So, <laughs> <laughs> how was it? You worded it, or, or did you do the thing? Is that what you said? <laughs> Uh, if anybody wants to see this, uh, uh, this baby copperhead that is uh, trying to get him out from the... I, I, I'm not, I'm, I, I wasn't looking at this. <laughs> I, you know, I, I grew up in Missouri, the, I know copperheads. <laughs> the dark bands uh, on the copperheads are shaped like Hershey's kisses. Uh, when you look at it the sun. There's no kissing about him. Yeah, he's a year old. Uh, when they hatch or hatch, when they're born, they have a bright yellow tail. It's almost, it's like your shirt. It's just like that. It's iridescent. Oh, yeah. And that they can wiggle it and attract prey. And then as they grow uh, and get older, that goes away and then it's just dark. But, and I don't know if you can see it on this camera. Yeah, if you look at it from over here, there's two little black spots right on top of his head. And 99% of all copper bits have those. Right. Yeah, they actually have no function okay. that I'm aware of. It's just, just a design. And then you can see right here the pit between his eye and his nostril. Yeah, that's that temperature sense of the pit I was telling you. Yeah. yeah. What's the name? What's the name? Uh, you mean like what kind of saint he is or what or no. his actual name? Yeah. I don't have any yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> <Lucretia>? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I've got some, some of them I haven't made. Yeah, well, that should be rusty. Rusty? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah, it's pretty sick. <laughs> if there's anything here that anybody wants to hold or touch, you see, you just want to hold the cup. No, <laughs> just kidding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. Where is she? Just oh, oh. <laughs> Black snake. 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 Yes. Black snake. Yes. Okay. And, and, and that uh, the one I have right here is a northern water snake, okay. most common water snake in this area. Okay. And the other is just an eastern garter snake. Okay. And the thing about the garter snakes are they, they can get four or five feet long. Uh, people don't realize, but they usually get, end up getting eaten by something before they get very big. Um, so uh, look at his eyes. That's right. His eyes are starting to turn blue. Sure. Very cool. Yeah. Do you know what that, that means awesome. that makes your eyes turn blue? It's the skin. It's like when they shed, right? Isn't it the shed the. Do you know what actually causes that? It's lymph gland fluid that gets between the new skin and the old skin. And then when that is reabsorbed into the lymph gland and it starts to dry up. The old skin, they can rub it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because there's a scale on the eyes too, it comes off when they shed. I can see all these sheds here. See the eye, shed, yeah. the eye scales? They're called eye caps. And with snakes, captain snakes sometimes those eye caps don't come off. And sometimes they'll shed two or three times before the eye. So you get all the uh, two or three layer thick eye caps that don't come off. Oh, trust me, I would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> if this would have decided to get back and make a run for it, I would. I appreciate it. Now, before I pick up the king's name, you don't want to save the process. Uh huh. Are you ready to go out here? And I don't trust you. Somebody else, no. If anybody wants to take any of these snake skins home, that's fine. Oh, does anybody know what this is? Yeah, I found them on the beach in Florida last year. I have my own. It's a sea turtle shell from a dead sea turtle. Wow. This is the bone that's underneath the, the uh, underneath the colorings, the color scales. That's a rib. Uh, the, the shell is actually ribs. And that's in that corner. Yeah. These little girls were digging for shells, and it was laying right beside them. And I stopped them. With, did you guys find that? And they looked at me. No, it's so, so I picked it up. <laughs> I thought I would take their, their thing if they found it. But... Now, can you identify the snake from the skin? You can sometimes. Um, okay. uh, let's see. Sometimes you can see a pattern uh, from like this. Looks like it might be the garter snake. See the band down the back? Yeah, okay. uh, you can tell sometimes from king snakes, you'll see the, 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 little, the little, yeah. Little lace out. I know which one this is. This is from this is from Lakeridge, but it's just because it's the biggest one I have here. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got some really big ones at home from no, um, from Hank before he passed. Cool. Yeah, did I show you the picture of Hank? No, I think you showed Vicky uh, and I before everybody else got here. Poor Hank. He was great. He was he was um, the most popular one with all the kids. Oh, that's good. That was that was Hank before he died. Oh, I guess that's was nine feet long. Yeah, okay. How what, yeah. what was his girth? Uh, he weighed he only weighed about twenty five pounds yeah. for a Burmese yeah. python for nineteen years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like I, I don't yeah. overfeed myself. Yeah. I try to get him to keep growing yeah, no, and not get fat. Oh my yeah, he was he was a sweetheart. Did you see that? This is my boy. Yeah, I thought that might be a good picture. Sure, yeah. This was my nine foot albino Burmese python that passed away about six months ago. But can't hardly see the part on the pool table, but he goes clear across the pool table. That's his head hanging down there. <laughs> Now, 
Uh, there's a lot of marbled salamanders, uh, which are the black ones with the little white uh, sort of marbly look to them. Yeah, so I have a picture with that. Do you who this is? So I found them underneath one of my flowers. Yeah, flowers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are really cool because they live a lot of times in your yard. Oh. You know, they're not like a stream. And it's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, considering big. that he was just hanging out under the water. They do get big. Hey, baby, someday I'll have a flower box. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find a cool another picture of the snake that we saw on our Lucy, Lucy tried to climb out of the cake out of the aquarium in my truck, so I had to put the tape on her. Oh wow. Awesome. 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 Her claws are very sharp and she cuts you if you pick her up. Uh -oh. The way you pick a snappy turtle up. You don't grab it, you don't pick it up by the tail because it puts too much stress on their spine. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very common way to carry them through the years. That's the way people carry it. But the way, you, the, the best way to do it is grab the tail to control the turtle. And then with your other hand, go under the, the turtle's belly and pick it up like that. And that way you have control. Well, you're supposed to have control. Come on, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. And those claws will really slice you open. So Lucy, Lucy is a common snapping turtle found in all creeks, ponds, lakes, streams, swamps everywhere all over North Carolina. But you can see the she got first now. <laughs> the shell on the back has uh, algae on it, and that's normal uh, because they. The sun, if they're getting enough sun, they'll almost always have a layer of algae on their back. And you can see the belly is very small compared to like a box turtle or something. They cannot climb inside their shell like some turtles can. And see those oh, claws? They, can't. they cannot. I cannot. Okay. Yeah. Their main defense is they'll turn their back to you and raise up on their back legs and use those spines on their shell to try to intimidate you. Okay. And if that doesn't keep you away, then they will bite you and scratch you and uh, she eats pretty much whatever I give her. She loves fish and mi mice and leftover chicken and steak and just about anything. Yeah, garbage disposal, my, <laughs> my reptile garbage disposal. I had kind of a neat thing that happened. Uh, I volunteer for Carolina Raptor Center. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Union yeah. Academy yeah. called. And these two ladies, they were scared to death, but they made this little video. It was a snake and a red tailed uh, hawk. Yeah. And they were tangled up. They oh, were wow. tussling. And uh, they managed to get a, a stick down on the snake. So the hawk could get away, but he uh, had an injured wing. Oh my goodness. And uh, so I went and transported him up to uh, the Raptor Center and he got to survive. And it was so neat because they, when I asked if they wanted to do the release, they did. Uh, and they had all these little kindergartners on the backside of Union Academy is all wooded. So they had all these little kindergartners lined up and I told them they needed to be real quiet when I let the teacher release the hawk and they were just in awe of the whole thing, so. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's not something you get to see every day. No. Yeah. And the, and the video that they had of the snake and the bird, you know, Tesla, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That was pretty awesome. I think you found a friend. Yeah. It looks pretty chill. Uh-huh. So we got another question. Yes. <clears throat> Is there a place or resource that uh, she can see the difference between a copperhead and a water snake or pick up pictures of them? Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you a book. Actually, two books. Uh, this is one. Uh, and if you can get a copy of that, it's got great <laughs> illustrations in it and it tells their exact region where they are. Um, and uh, the main thing is with, with, like I said, with the copperhead, um, the dark bands are hourglass shaped and they look like Hershey's Kisses from the side. But a water snake, 
no matter how flat a water snake makes his body and how flat he makes his head, uh, they do that as sort of a, to scare you. But a water snake can have a real wide diamond shaped head too if it's scared or angry. Uh, so you can't go, go by the head shape. But if you look at the bands on the water snake, they are just sporadically shaped. There's no hourglass or no Hershey's Kiss shape to them. There's just all different uh, shapes. Another thing, uh, let me see if I can find a picture here real quick. Yeah, there's no. The, on, on, a, on a water snake's, uh, the side of their face, on their lip, they have real dark lines that run down between the scales. If I can find the water snake in this book, I'll show it to you. I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see here, but on that picture right there on the mouth, little dark bands running down its cheeks across its top lip and its bottom lip. Most water snakes have those. Copperheads won't have those. It just kind of runs down between the scales on their mouth. But the main thing is, is the bands. There's just no shape to the bands. And I will show you close up here. He's getting ready to shed, so he looks kind of nasty. But see, the bands are just kind of sporadic, all different shapes. Let's see if I can get him. This is the northern water snake. This is the most common water snake in our area. There you can see the bands there. No Hershey's Kiss shape to that at all. Uh, and then the, the, on the mouth, you've got the dark lines going down the lips. Uh, you can see them right there. And copperheads don't have those. Well, he's not biting me. <laughs> That's unusual for a water snake. They're usually really defensive. Did everybody get to hold or touch what you want? Okay. Oh, I wanted to maybe hold the, the uh, one again. Oh, the drag it? Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Let's see where I can put this uh, one to where I'll put it back. I don't know why I'm That's not my point. Yeah, he's real comfortable with you. Just reach in and grab him with one. You tell him, right? Well, oh, well, 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 that's right. Put him up just one or two things. Support him real bit. And he's going to start waving his tail. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Back. There you go, perfect, perfect. I'm gonna put this guy in here instead of in with the other snakes like I had before. Do the water snakes, if, if they've been out in the sun, do they have like a darker shade? No, it won't change their it won't change their coloring. With, uh, no, um, absorption. No. Yeah, when they're young like this, they have a lot more uh, vivid coloring. As they get older, they kind of turn just like like he'll probably be mostly brown. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can, you'll still be able to see the pattern, especially when he just sheds. But if they kind of get darker and dull, dull looking as they get older. Yeah. You done with what you call it? Rusty. Rusty. He's been wanting to get away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rusty, I'm not going to put you in a case, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought he would warm up a little bit and be comfortable. But he just kept looking like he wanted to get away. <laughs> See, he looks a little more chill now. She doesn't realize that she, she can get out of there so easily. She got out of yeah. my truck before I came here. Yeah. Yeah. She pushed a little. That's why I had to take You're like, why can't I break? <laughs> so, around, and we call it. Yeah. Yeah, if you can see the eyes, the, oh, the eyes are good. There's no more questions. Mm. Okay. No questions on the hour? So, so, well, just thank you for being Absolutely. Thank you, guys, boys. Thank you for having me.